Hey, today is April 18th. This is the KCP community meeting. I know we've got some light attendance today, most likely because of KubeCon. Uh, so uh, I have an announcement to make that I will also make next week, which is that um, we are uh, shifting some of our focus over at Red Hat to some other things. So. We are still extremely committed and invested in Kubernetes, the Kubernetes community, the surrounding ecosystems. But uh, unfortunately for, for those of us who've been working on KCP, uh, we are like Red Hat's constantly evaluating uh, you know, what we invest on and where we focus. And uh, for this calendar year, we're gonna be prioritizing some other objectives. And that means that KCP won't have our immediate focus, uh, unfortunately. So uh, those of us who have been working on KCP are gonna be shifting to other areas, but we firmly believe in the power of open source and that it com the power comes from the community. And it's been an awesome couple of years. Uh, this has been a really exciting project for me to work on. And I, I think I can hopefully speak for the rest of the folks here that uh, they really enjoyed it as well. So um, we'd like to extend the invitation to anybody in the community who's interested in taking stewardship of KCP and, and pushing the project forward. And we are extremely committed and interested to in and to um, helping transition our leadership as it's been for the past couple of years to new folks. So uh, if you are interested or know folks who might be interested, please have them reach out to me, Stefan, Paul. Um, we're available on Slack and email, uh, obviously, and would love to um, have those conversations to help with the transition. So uh, definitely sad news for, for me personally, I, I think for the team, but uh, we are just shifting to other priorities at this time. Paul, is there anything you wanted to add? I think you covered it pretty well. If you're interested, please reach out. We're excited to see where the project may go with uh, other folks kind of driving it. So please do let us know if you want to. Mike. Yes, so um, before um, making commitment, let me just start by observing that the um, edge-based work that we're doing is continuing. Um, and we do find uh, parts of KCP useful, um, in particular uh, KCP core. We're not using uh, TMC, but we're using KCP core. Um, and I'm curious who else finds, if there is anybody else who finds KCP core uh, useful that would like to continue using it. Um, that would be might be a basis for forming some community for continued um, stewardship of KCP core, or perhaps, you know, some cut uh, down version of that. I think uh, for the edge work, we don't even need all of what's in KCP core, but we do find some of it useful. And I'm curious if there's anybody else that finds it useful. Go ahead, Ezra. I, know, I have another question. So if anyone wants first to answer, Mike, maybe it's better. Yeah, I, I think, Hopefully at next week's meeting, there will be more folks uh, beyond this group and, and maybe we can get some additional interest. But because uh, I, I think most or all of you work together, is that I know, MJ, you're you're separate, but y'all are, are pretty much a group, right? Right. I think most of the IBM people you see are kind of around the same area. Yeah. So So. Okay, so I have a question. The question Hold on just a second. Go ahead, MJ. No, so I just wanted to say that I think I really would like to be part of the what's what's next with the community moving forward. As Mike mentioned, potentially maybe cut off version of core or something like that. I still have to confirm that with my new employment commitment, basically, how much of my time would be able to, to do that for that. And maybe I will have more clarity next week, but I think, yeah, let's see where okay. we can take this one. All right, go ahead, Ezra. Yeah, I, I, I just 
I wanted to understand, you know, practically, you know, in terms of the procedure, there are some ongoing tasks that some of them are kind of, uh, you know, owned by you, uh, not you specifically, <laughs> but, uh, you know, your team. Uh, for example, one major thing is, you know, this rebasing to 126 and so on. So is there... Is there a list of, for example, items you can say, oh, we are committing to finish that? Or is there some, can we have some, some or, or can we have such a list, right? Of, okay, we, we, we are going to finish ABCD and we cannot commit beyond that. You know, that list can be empty. That's fine. As long as, you know, we, we, we know what, what, what's, what, what are the plans? Well, Ezra, can I suggest we may be able to influence that list also? Yeah, I first want to may, you know understand maybe it's a immediate transition and it's kind of you know they no one has enough bandwidth to actually take large such large tasks. I don't know. So Andy, it's probably for you the question. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know. <laughs> um, so I did get the 126 rebase to a partially functioning state. Um, the it's not done because there's just there have to be some PRs that get merged in some of the dependent repos like the code gener repo or our client go repo, and once those get merged, then I there's like cascading updates. But theoretically, uh, given folks time to review and approve i could finish that out i don't know what else necessarily we could really fit in i kind of leave that up to paul i guess right i think uh finishing the rebase would probably be good if you believe it's something that we can fit into the april time frame i think past april it'll be tough and up to the prioritization of different teams that will have to be involved as we make transitions within Red Hat. I think, David, you had some items that were considered stability pieces that you were still trying to, to get committed and get reviews from uh, folks while they're in KubeCon or had some time. So I, I think maybe my question would be, are there items that are deal breakers to any sort of project transition that Red Hat would have to uh, take part in? And I'd be interested in that list if we could come up with one. Right, so so I think it's a good idea. I think Mike mentioned that as well. We can come up. Uh, there are two kind of ty types of things, right? One is actual, you know, technical PRs and so on. Uh, I don't have immediate list, but the other one, and they think, Andy, you actually did the, the initial kind of initiating this effort, but no work was done, is maybe helping with some stuff we think we may be able to upstream, right? Uh, so I think your knowledge or at least, you know, helping us in case we, we want to do that will be very, very, very helpful. So even if you do not take the lead on that, uh, be able to help with that would be very, you know, appreciated. Yeah, but I, I would be happy to be available for consultation and uh, if you all write caps and would like review time, I can give you that. Okay. Right. So, so we can. We, we, we. I think it's a good idea. We can put up a list even on the on the PRs or issue that you know people can put some list and you can see. That's for my. Yeah. You. Go ahead, David. Um, uh, j just two words to continue on what Paul said about uh, uh, the TMC side. Mainly, uh, I was able to get matched the two remaining peers about sharding the sinker. So that's that was I think, think the, the most critical things to not you know leave the uh, TMC repo in a state which would not be you know final or at least um, stable. Uh, there are other pending peers which would be good to to manage i think or just as well to reach a, a state where you know things are consistent and there are no pending refactoring uh work uh but apart from that uh, i think 
it's 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 mainly it. I mean, not not much more to to uh, pending things here. Okay, thank you, Mike. Right. So I wanted to add a couple, a little bit of um, additional to get the detail and color on on some of these things. So um, in terms of our work on Edge MC, the additional thing that would be helpful that we haven't uh, really started yet is developing the denaturing view that we uh, talked about you know, months ago and, and agreed would be part of the plan. Uh, haven't got around to executing on that yet. We could probably use some help uh, understanding uh, how views are built in KCP. Um, that's a fairly short-term thing. Um, I, I do think that the rebase to 126 would be helpful. I, I would really like to see that. Um, longer term, in terms of upstreaming, um, I think, you know, the main things that I'm interested in is, um, you know, uh, two things. Uh, one, which was we talked about a while ago, uh, was the generic control plane. Um, I think I tend to think of this is really it's what's upstreaming that is really about um, refactoring the Kube API server, right, to expose a bigger subset of its functionality as a library that can be used by other uh, main programs. Uh, would, would you say that's fair? Uh, I think it's fair. I would encourage you not to word it that way in the cap because the API machinery leads have strongly indicated they want it to be considered new built from the ground up and then once proven it could be swapped in and you could swap out the uh the stuff from the cube api server itself to use the the new library okay but yes like yeah, I, no, I generally no objection. agree with you right okay yeah sure i understand that as a um path but the the desired result of traveling that path is that the kube api server will use the generic control plane right? exactly Yes. Okay. That makes sense to me. Okay. Um, so I think that would be helpful, um, but even more helpful to us in our work on edge uh, is this concept that you guys call uh, logical clusters upstream. They tend to call them uh, super namespaces. Um, I know there was an attempt to oversell them upstream that failed because it wasn't oversell. Uh, it was an attempt to sell it as multi-tenancy, which it's not. It's really a much uh, less, it's a much more modest thing really, which is a, a higher level of uh, scoping or grouping of naming. Uh, it's not full multi-tenancy. It doesn't have all the isolation properties you would expect uh, from the word multi-tenancy. So I think, uh, you know, I'm interested in, you know, going upstream again and asking, you know, with a properly modest ask, say, hey, you know, this concept of an extra level of organization in the naming, uh, you know, could that go upstream? And I think we've collected some use cases, uh, and I'd like to take, you know, with multiple use cases, you know, I think we may have a, a chance of getting that upstream. I would love to see that. I think the best chance of success there is to go to a variety of SIGs outside of API machinery and get backing from those SIGs. Also, find backers. Uh, you know, other companies, other vendors, other users uh, who can demonstrate uh, very specific needs and and have them be, you know, real needs, not just theoretical needs, uh, because just saying we need this for the sake of having one extra level of scoping is not, in my opinion, I don't think that's going to... That's not a use case. That, that's yeah. a technology feature. That's not a use yeah. case. So, so re you really need a lot of users and SIGs saying, yeah, this would really help us. OK, thank you. Go ahead, Ezra. Yeah, I just want to say that I fully agree. And then, to be honest, part of what you said, Mike, is pretty, pretty much our wishful thinking, right? That it was an oversell previously, and if we narrow the scope, it will be easier to upstream. But um, I agree with Andy. I'm not sure that you know uh, it will be so easy, right? Uh, it may be, and I, I never I, said it would be easy. Yeah, I agree. So I, I so I think uh, Andy, by the way, uh, 
getting more, I know that we discussed it, but uh, you know, di discussing with you offline and getting maybe more feedback from you on what, why you think, for example, it was not successful previously and some uh, additional maybe, you know, feedback on what we should do other than what you just said, I think it will be also very helpful. Of course, you know, reviewing the cap one, once we have it and so on. Um, sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, I can work on uh, getting the 126 rebase finished. It's um, a bit ironic, I guess, that 127 just came out. But, uh, I think hopefully going from 126 to 127 would be easier than 124 to 126. Uh, but yeah, I can, I can work on getting that done. MJ, go ahead. So one of the I think more operational questions, what the, what's the state of CI and all that infrastructure around KCP? What will happen with that? Yeah, so um, the uh, we run CI in two places, GitHub Actions and the OpenShift Prowl. GitHub Actions, uh, assuming we grant the appropriate permissions, you know, we as part of a transition, whatever superpowers we have, the new uh, stewards would get. And so you'd have full control over GitHub Actions. So there, there's nothing private or proprietary there other than what GitHub does. Uh, in the OpenShift Prowl, everything is uh, open source config wise in uh, the OpenShift release repository. And there's the only insight you don't get is like if something goes wrong on one of the build clusters, we have an internal Slack channel where we can go file an issue and, and try and get some help. But uh, like, I don't have any access into those clusters more than, than any of you do necessarily, which is basically not. <laughs> so, um, you know, assuming that the build farm is working the way that it's supposed to, uh, you go configure things in the OpenShift release repo, just like you would configure things in the Kubernetes test info repo for the, the Kubernetes Prowl, and everything should continue to function. Yeah, got it. I assume in the long run, we still need to think about moving to somewhere more different CI for that particular part, but in the short term, I think it should be enough. Yeah, I mean, everything, could conceivably go back to GitHub Actions. It's just slower, and the um, there's some UX issues. Like if you rerun a failed job, you lose the um, the artifacts. You know, so if you if it's saving off all of the log files and the YAML and whatever is produced as part of a, a CI run, uh, GitHub Actions only preserves that for the most recent run, which is unfortunate. Uh, hopefully they'll change that at some point. But uh, other than that, it's really just like a speed issue. I think Prowl can run things faster generally. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, uh, you know, if you all are interested in taking over or know people who would, please reach out. Uh, I will we'll have this same discussion next week when hopefully there's a larger audience. And I think uh, Paul and I will, will craft something and send to the mailing lists, uh, or I should say the Google groups and the Slack channel, just so, um, that's out there today as well. Right. Uh, actually, there wasn't any kind of announcement in the all the KCP channels, right? Uh, Slack or mailing list, right? Correct. The, what uh, we're discussing right now is our, our first public 
uh, discussion of the matter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's see the feedback after the <laughs> announcement. Yep. Okay. Yeah, on personal notice, you know, it was great working with you, and it's really <laughs> pity that, you know, it ended like that. It's, uh, there's a lot of potential, I think. Hopefully, we can make something out of it. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Yeah, same right. same yeah I think there were a lot of, uh, there are a lot of good ideas in KCP, right? I think we'll be, we really would like to bring forward some of these ideas that I think are really powerful and helpful. Fingers crossed they can survive. So <laughs> thanks, thanks everybody for uh, you know being involved and being part of this community. And I hope that I can see great things in the future. And I will uh, hopefully see you all next week as well. So thanks and take care. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yes, thank you.